In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand and face the back of the church. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. And let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the Alpha, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him, and all the ages, to him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Amen.
Exult, let them exult, the hosts of heaven. Exult, let angel ministers of God exult. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lighting of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in this awesome glory of this holy light, Invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, the unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with heart and love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorpost of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebearers, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly voices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death 
and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, 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 wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity, beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, 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 happy fault that turned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, Worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is this night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, 
who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Please extinguish your candle and save them for when we renew our baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. And let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Till the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed bearing fruit on it to be your food and to all the animals of the land and all the birds of the air and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground I give all the green plants for food and so it happened God looked at everything he made and found it very good the word of the Lord
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as an holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I now know how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its thorns in the ticket, so he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in, in the place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessings. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord.
let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham, father of nations, as once you swore. Grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff, and with a an hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them, the column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, so that it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. When the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians, then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on towards the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power of the Lord had shown against the Egyptians. They feared the Lord 
and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit. A wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandon you, but with great tenderness I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with enduring love I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace 
be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. One afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stone. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledged to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass. Your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come and receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not. And nations that knew you not shall run to you, 
because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding that you may know also where are length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. 
He has probed her by his knowledge, the one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him trembling, before whom the stars of their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, Here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given to her, to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them, because of the blood that they poured out on the ground, and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over lands, according to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations when they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, 
but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in, the, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and cleanse you from all your impurities, and from your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and a place and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole Church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Glory.
let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in his resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, 
Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him, and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. How are you holding up? I mean, we just covered several thousand years of salvation history in about an hour and ten minutes. That's not bad. Actually, it's kind of exciting if you think about all that we just heard. And it always ends with the same question. If Jesus has risen from the dead, what must I do with my life? There's a great poignancy to the simple fact that the two Marys, the Magdalene and the mother of Salome, actually bought spices to anoint a dead body. Some of his closest followers. No one, not even the ones who loved him best, not even the ones who were with him daily, no one actually expected him to rise from the dead. And we might think, because we read the book, but he said he would. He told them what would happen. How could they not believe him? 
But we've all seen the end of the story. It was brand new to them. Yes, he said he would, but he said many enigmatic things, things that were hard to understand. And I'm sure they thought the talk of rising from the dead was something other than he actually would. No, when they and when we encounter the empty tomb of Jesus Christ, we face even today the most important decision of our life. Did he rise from the dead or not? What do we believe? There are only two choices. To try to take the agnostic middle way and to say it does not matter is to decide no. This is because the agnostic middle way still results in no personal commitment. So it is yes or no, and nothing matters more. If Jesus has risen from the dead and you decide to believe it, then God has found you and invites you to freely and in love give your life to him because he has freely and in love given his life to you. This is what it means to be a disciple, to personally commit your life to Jesus Christ, all of it, every day, to everything he has taught, to the church he has built, and which is his body, and to never turn back, and to share this good news with everyone. Alleluia. The Lord has risen. He has truly risen. Let those to be baptized stand with their godparents when your name is called. Mark Hummel. Susan D. Hummel. Jacqueline Ray Kirkpatrick. Laurie Patricia O'Driscoll. Valentine Hart Barger, Jason Dobbleval, Enrique Uriah, Abigail Chesbro, Matthew Gabriel Chesbro. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these, our brothers and sisters, in their blessed hope, so, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. Will the congregation please rise for the Litany of the Saints?
Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new people brought to birth for you in the font of baptism. So that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power through Christ our Lord.
O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism, O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, go forth, Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, So that human nature, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this thought so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, before you are baptized, you must renounce Satan and profess your faith here in the presence of God's church. And so I ask you, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? then I invite you to come forward for baptism. Yep.
Saint Dimphna, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Patrick, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Padre Pio, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Ita, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thomas More, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Enrique, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Agnes, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Anna, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sebastian, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. Receive the light of Christ. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light and keep, your <clears throat> and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go for out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. <coughs>
Massive. Yeah. Please be seated. <laughs> Let those who are to make a profession of faith and receive the sacrament of confirmation, and those who are already baptized Catholic and seeking the sacrament of confirmation, please stand with your sponsor when your name is called. Jamela Grace Town Slaughter. Helen Catherine Lomax. Leanne Ha Singh Tanya Sue Garrig Stuart Benjamin Payne Samuel Rook San Juanita Uriah, Josh Ray, Anne Elizabeth Olmstead, Hunter Cates, Carla Fortinelle, Grace McCoy. Madeline Gomez, Maria de Assis, Sam Duda, Paige Haney, Ian Gilchrist, Emma Frett, Aiden Gilchrist, Allison Andrews. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us all renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God and the Holy Catholic Church. So I'll invite the congregation to please stand. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. I now address those who desire to be one with us in the fullness of the Catholic faith. Of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit in this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, 
the sign of the church's unity. And so I ask you, do you believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God? I do. <laughs> the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please extinguish your candles and the congregation may be seated. Let those who are to receive the sacrament of confirmation and their sponsors please stand. My dear candidates for confirmation, 
By your baptism you have been born again in Christ, and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost, and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Maria Goretti, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Lucy, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. <clears throat> Mary Magdalene, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. <clears throat> Joan of Arc, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. John the Apostle, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Mary Magdalene, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Saint Vitas, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thomas Beckett, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Maria Goretti, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Maximilian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. George, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. <coughs> Mary Magdalene, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Okay. 
Bernadette, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Catherine of Alexandria, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Okay. St. Monica, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Virgin Mary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. George, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. St. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Miriam, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Patrick, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dimphna, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Padre Pio, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Ita, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thomas More, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. <coughs> Agnes, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Faustina, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Agatha, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
Brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the church established by Jesus Christ, may she be the light for all who live in darkness and proclaim the truth to all who live in doubt. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are That in the light of Christ's victory over death, <coughs> nations may work together to overcome violence against all, especially the poor, the weak, and the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our neophytes in Confirmandi, may they be faithful disciples of Jesus, bearers of the light of Christ in their lives, and witnesses to Christ in their words and deeds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are away from home this Easter, particularly members of the military and relief workers, may God protect them each day, guide their work, and bring them home safely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, especially the sick, the poor, the homeless, and all those whose names are recorded in our book of petitions. May their sorrow be turned into gladness, which no one can take from them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our departed parishioners, relatives, and friends. <clears throat> May they who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection be welcomed into the light of the Father's face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world by dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, 
Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all of your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercy, 
graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, of John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my earth. Only say the word to my soul.
this time, those who will be receiving their first Holy Communion will come forward to the front to receive from the bishop. And so please be patient with us as we offer Holy Communion this evening.
let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Bishop, thank you for being here with us this evening, and it is wonderful, again, having not been to their last Easter vigil, to be back together in, in great numbers, and so thank you for your presence at your cathedral to celebrate these Easter sacraments with those uh, candidates and catechumens, both from Bishop Kelly as well as here at the cathedral. Um, you grace us with your presence, so thank you. A few words of thanks to those who have had a hand in these liturgies over these holy days. i like to say a word of thanks to the parish staff who have been put in many hours of putting the church together and taking the church apart and putting it back together again from Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and then again for this liturgy this evening. I want to say a word of thanks to our choir, to our lectors, to our ushers. I also want to say a word of thanks to Jerry Potter, who runs our RCIA program and who has shepherded our group this year very well. Thank you to you and to the other volunteers who have been a part of this process. Um, to Father Zui and to Sharia, who have been working with our Bishop Kelly students, um, thank you to you for your good work. And to, to all who have had a hand in the formation and the journey of these new Catholics who now stand with us, one in communion, to their sponsors and to their godparents, to their spouses and to their families um, who have supported them along this journey. Um, it truly is a blessed night for the church as we grow in number and we grow in the number of those who profess Christ Jesus as their Lord and who desire to be his disciples. And so, again, congratulations to all of you. Just a reminder to those who have come into the church, immediately when Bishop departs, we're going to gather in the sanctuary for a picture, and then there'll be an opportunity for individual shots with the bishop, um, with the professional photographer, once the group shot is over. But again, happy Easter to all of you, and congratulations to our new Catholics. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, alleluia.